What's happening? What's up? This is Osage, the PC Parent, and I've had a couple people uh, ask me to continue the overclocking series on Linux, so that's what we're going to do today, starting with the GPU. Alright, this is going to be uh, strictly for NVIDIA cards, because I do not know how to overclock an AMD card and I don't own an AMD card so uh, this is going to be for you GTX users more specifically for post Fermi cards Fermi cards are the 500 series cards I believe so the this is for the 600 series 700 series and 900 series of the GTX NVIDIA cards um, the first thing you need to do is to f enable cool bits and as you can see here what cool bits allows you to do is uh, enables Overclocking, so you can do pre Fermi cards, but uh, I'm, this, for the sake of the tutorial, this is going to be post Fermi. Uh, but this first bit enables overclocking for pre Fermi cards, and these other ones are, I think, for post Fermi only, but I'm not sure. Don't quote me. But, anyways, this is uh, allows you to enable SLI, configure your GPU fan speed, or enables overclocking and enables over voltage. All right, so to enable, we need to enable cool bits first, and to do that, you need to open the terminal. Okay, type in sudo nvidia dash x config enter. Uh, so this this command that you did will now make the xorg xorg dot conf file that we do not have. So now we do have it, and what you want to do is sudo space gedit space the path etsy x11 xorg.conf which should open up a uh, gedit then we need to go find where it says device which is right here um blah blah and we want to add make sure um Make sure it's in line. So space over a couple times. Option. Cool bits in quotations. And then um, the number of bits that you want. Now let me explain that bits thing to you real quick. If you want to enable overclocking and the fan speed control, which is eight and four, not not this bit number, but eight and four, the first number, you would uh add them two together, which would be twelve. So that would be the bit that you put here. So or if you want to enable over voltage, which I if you're watching this, you probably don't need to enable the over voltage. I would not do that. Uh but you would add sixteen, eight, and four. If you want to enable SLI and uh, fan speed and overclocking and over voltage you would add 16 8 4 and 2 so what you need to do is figure out which one of these options that you want to use and then add them together so i'm going to use overclocking and fan speed because those are the two things that i need for overclocking and if you add those two together it would be 12 put that in there and save it so it's saved or you could have clicked that up there so now after you uh have set the cool bit inside of your xorg.com file you need to reboot your computer so i'm going to go ahead and reboot my computer and come right back Okay, so now you should have uh, rebooted your computer and we're back from that. So we're going to continue. At this point, you should be able to now open up the NVIDIA settings. And now you should have some new things in there that wasn't there previously, uh, like thermal settings. See, uh, under your GPU, there's a there's an entry called thermal settings and it'll have your your temperature, your fan information, et cetera, et cetera. Now, 
as you can see, I don't have fan information because I don't have a fan on my GPU. I have a water block on my GPU, therefore no fan. So I don't know why I, I enabled fan settings. But uh, you should you should have enabled your fan settings if you have a standard uh, uh, video card. And you should see fan information here. And what you want to do is click enable fan settings. And then you can manually set the fan settings here. Now, unfortunately, there is no um, fan curve settings. So you got to kind of just set it and forget it. That's, that's going to be your thermal and fan settings under thermal settings. And then you have something called power miser. You get stuff like, uh, you get lots of information, like adaptive clocking, uh, which means it will uh, throttle your clock, your clock speed back when you're not using it or pump it up when you are using it. So you can see right now mine's running at 679 megahertz, uh, which is not the uh, top core speed. And it's running at 6,008 uh, megahertz on the on the memory. Uh, it's using AC power. I don't know why that really matters. Uh, well, I guess if you have a laptop, it could be using battery. But I'm not on a laptop, and I don't recommend that you overclock a NVIDIA chip on a laptop. Oh, by the way, let me make this very clear. If you burn up your video card, do not, <laughs> do not, I am not responsible for that. Uh, don't even leave it in the comment section. I don't, not my problem. You are doing this at your own risk. So with that out the way, let's continue. And then down here at the performance level. So I have a triple monitor set up. And which causes my GPU not to ever throttle all the way down to zero. Plus, I'm also recording, so it's probably using a bit of a GPU there also. But if you're on a single monitor, normal, quote unquote, normal setup, uh, you should probably be at zero. Uh, and unless you're watching this video, maybe it's not at zero. But so when you're not using your GPU, you should throttle down to zero. And when you are using your GPU, like at full speed, like if you're playing Trine or uh, you know, Bioshock or something, it should go all the way up to level three. Uh, the same with the memory transfer rate. So if you go down here to the edible um, performance levels, here's where the overclocking will take place. So over here you see level three. And what that means is whatever we set this clock speed here is where the max performance will be. I recommend that you start low. The, this is what's called an offset. So if your GPU clock speed is, we'll say, 1,000. Uh, well, right here it says 1,001 for mine. But we'll just say 1,000 for the sake of numbers. Whatever you change this offset to, it will plus that. So if I change this to 100, it will be 1,100 as my new clock speed. If I change it to 200, it'll be 1,200 as my cl uh, new clock speed. Don't set this to what you want the uh, the clock speed to be. If you want the clock speed to be 1200, don't put 1200 here. Uh, you'll have a serious problem probably. So this is, like I said, this is the the number that will be added to this number over here under max. I know what I can pretty much set my clock speed to be, which is around 1500. But to be safe, I'm going to add 400 megahertz to this over here. And be conservative and add 100 megahertz to the memory transfer, which is gonna put my uh, max memory to 6,108 and my core clock speed or my graphics clock speed to 1,401. Hit enter in both boxes and it'll tell you graphics clock offset has been set to your new number. And if you look up here, you can see now that my clock speed is uh, now 1,406 max and minimum 536. Same thing with uh, my memory at level three, it's 6,108 uh, as the minimum and maximum because uh, the memory speed doesn't change. It only changes per level. And then you want to test it. Uh, so you want to get a benchmark out. I recommend something like the Unigen Valley Benchmark or Unigen Heaven. Uh, you can see here, here's the Valley Benchmark. You just go to, just just Google Valley Benchmark and you should be able to find this page. Uh, and there's a free download. You know, you just click it and download it and run it and test it out. If your computer crashes, <laughs> your clock speeds are not good. Uh, that's why I say start out low. Now, here's a note. 
if the NVIDIA driver crashes on Linux, uh, you're going to need to reboot your computer. There's no, uh, there's no rebound or no recovery mode that I know of for the NVIDIA driver. So if it, if it stalls and crashes, what it'll do is it'll downclock your, your, your video card to a, a lower setting than even the uh, stock setting. And the only way to recover from that that I know of is to go ahead and reboot your computer. Plus, it's probably the safest thing. I know it's a little bit uh, unnecessary or inconvenient, but that's the best way to recover from the video crash. So that's why in, uh, that's why I say, you know, start low. Uh, if you if your clock speed is 1,000, do 1,050. If that works, do 1,100. If that works, do 1,100 and 20 like go go in small increments until you find that point where it crashes and i mean that's really pretty much all there is to this uh overclocking is not terribly hard it's just a little you have to jump through a couple of hoops to actually get the uh features that you need in, in the nvidia settings to actually do the overclocking don't forget if you watched my other videos you need to use stuff like p sensor which I have all the way over here on another monitor. So I use P-Sensor. Uh, you can monitor your your um, your temperatures over here also while you're running the, the Valley Benchmark if you have multiple monitors. Uh, if you don't have multiple monitors, what you can do with P-Sensor is stretch this out and then right-click on it. Or actually, no. Sorry about that. What you want to do is stretch this out there we go there's the rest of it and you'll see a column called graph and you can just check that and when it checks what it's going to do is graph uh, do a graph of the history so while you're running the benchmark even if you don't have multiple monitors you can just uh, run this in the background minimize it and let it record the temperature um, as the benchmark does its thing and it's not really showing right now Maybe ah, there we go. Uh, so as you can see here, it's gonna report my uh, my temperatures over time, and that way you can tell if your shit's getting too hot, or if it's within spec. Uh, this is awesome also because it'll tell you how much video memory you're using and how much graphics card of your graphics your memory uh, that you're using, and all that stuff. So yeah, don't forget to watch my other video on uh, P-Sensor, or, or just go download and use P-Sensor. Yeah, that's pretty much it uh, as far as overclocking. Like I said, I'm not responsible for you burning up your car, so be safe. Do, do these things one at a time. Don't do both of them at the same time. So first, find your stable clock speed, your core clock speed, your gra or your graphics clock speed. And when you find the stable uh, clock speed for that, then go over to your memory transfer rate and do that little by little. Now, memory transfer rate is going to be possibly more finicky. So I would say go up in uh, even smaller increments than than the, the core one. So do it by tens, possibly. I don't know how far your card will, will overclock. Nobody can tell you that. Each, clock, each, each video card will be just a little bit different. So that's pretty much it. Um, if you have any questions, leave them down in the comment section. I'll try to help you as best as I can. Uh, and once again, this is Osiris, PC Pimp, and I'm out.